had my one. Um, no, no, that's not allowed. You got to have at least one. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Oh, you're muted now. Oh, now you're back. Go. Can you hear us? Can you yeah, hear us now? now? All right, all right. How's it going? Excited to be here. Good. Happy to have you, and thanks for rescheduling and all that other good stuff. Oh, no problem. We uh, we had graduation last Thursday and Friday. Um and uh, we normally have, when we do that, it's normally Friday and Saturday, and we work Friday night and Saturday morning. But this time, it got moved up a day, and so we had to work Thursday night, then Friday morning for the College of Ed ceremony. So I appreciate y'all working around that. That was a change, but that, that should have been a one-off. I, I guess the president's children won't graduate from college but one time, so he won't have to move our graduation so he can attend theirs but once, I hope. So... Wow. <clears throat> examples of how not to lead. Um, so, you know, you, you learn stuff every day. Um, but, but we got through it, so everybody's good. So are we ready to get started with master scheduling this morning? I'm, that, I don't, y'all don't have your camera on. I don't guess that's important, though. Um, on is no? No, you, I just got, a, I just got me. Uh, minute, now I've got a I've got a screen for you. There you go. Now I can see you. All right. Now let me see if I can angle it down so we can. There right. we go. Yeah. There we go. There. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, so we're here for our final installment this semester of our professional development series. And this one is near and dear to my heart as an operations person. This one is master schedule. And so. I sent my, my little slideshow, and we'll get started on it this morning. So let me share my screen. Again, thank you for being with us today, or thank you for being with me. And let me be here with you. All right, so let me move this stuff out of the way. Here we go. All right, so I call this one Master Scheduling, the Cornerstone of School Improvement. And so here's how I see... Uh, Oh, there we go. Got it. All right. So here's how I see the path to school improvement. Um, you have a school improvement plan. And for those of you who have been unlucky enough to haven't heard me before at the conferences or been in my class or whatever, um, my contention is, is that there are two um, – two supporting foundational pieces to that school improvement plan, which is the life of a school. It is the future of the school. It's the success or lack thereof of the school is can you, can you work, plan your work and then work your plan? You know, you've got a school improvement plan with an instructional improvement piece. You've got a, a piece to grow your faculty. You've got a piece to uh, <clears throat> improve your, your school and community relationships, your parent your stakeholder relationships. You know, you're trying to improve your, your, your culture of your building, your, your, your teacher working conditions survey. Um, if you're having issues with student management, you've got a, a student behavior plan that the, that the state requires if, you, uh, you know, if you're exceeding local or state averages on out-of-school suspensions, uh, acts of crime and violence, those kinds of things. So you've got all those plans. Well, how do you support them? Well, you support them with the master schedule and the school budget. Um, it doesn't do any good to have all these grandiose ideas if you don't have the, the money, if you don't put your money behind it. Um, I work with a, a principal out of Durham. She works with me on, uh, she works with me on Tuesday nights and well again this summer. She's principal in, in, at, uh, in school in Durham. And one of the things that she argues as well. Now, um, I guess this is a more modern argument than from my time in 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 that in the role as principal. She says that if you get you know if you get buy-in on the school budget from the school improvement team, it helps 
it, it helps legitimize what you're doing with your money and you don't get as many questions from teachers and parents. Um, many times teachers and parents in my era weren't that involved with about the budget. They just wanted to raise money for whatever they, their particular idea, you know, for their curricula, their club, their, the group that they're, that they were involved in as a faculty member or involved in as a parent that had a kid in. And as long as they got some money, that's all they cared about. They didn't care about the instructional piece of how you spent the money, but that's no longer the case. According to Renita. Again, she's principal in Durham. Parents are, are very much in, and stakeholders and community members are very much aware that that you have budgets in schools and, and you can prioritize how you spend those uh, to improve instruction, to improve outcomes. And so it, by, by working your budget through the school improvement team, there's a lot of transparency there. That's what Renita argues, that that's where that transparency people part comes. Now, the other cornerstone is why we're here today um, is master scheduling. Um, if you if you have, for example, in your in your school improvement plan that you know we've we've done a data dive and we really need to work on third grade reading, I should see something in that master schedule that addresses third grade reading. More time, the best teacher, whatever. I should see something in that master schedule that addresses those priorities from that school improvement plan. That's the whole notion. Now, the biggest problem with master schedule is, is that it, it is that folks don't have a process or they have the wrong process as to what the priorities are in scheduling. So let me work through those with you this morning. Here is your here's the things that you need in preparation to, to starting you put to put together your master schedule. You've got to do the data collection so that you're the most knowledgeable person in the room when it comes to this process. Here are the things you need. You need your report card. What counts on your report card? We should be addressing things that count on our report card. That's what we're trying to improve. We're trying to, to improve the how much kids learn at, in our building, their performance, but we, we, we got to know what counts. If it's not on the report card, it's not as important. It's, it might be important, but it's not as important as stuff on the report card because the state and the community that you live in and the state has said, these are what's important from their school. If they weren't, they wouldn't have written them down and we wouldn't keep the score on. So we have to look at our report card. Then we got to look at our EVA school report. Are we making growth? Are we growing kids? Or are we warehousing? Them? You know, comparative accountability where your kids are it's about who you get. Growth accountability is what you're doing with. And so we got to know that. Do we just get a bunch of smart kids and warehouse them and claim that we're winning? Or do we actually grow kids a year every year? So we got to get, get our school, EVA school report, and that gives us our teacher report as well. We not got to know what our school improvement plan is, what our initiatives are, what do we really want to improve. Um, we got to look at last year's master schedule. We need to look at duty rosters and supervision schedule. Um, and as a point of clarification, a duty roster is during the day, bus duty, car rider duty, hall duty, lunch duty, you know, those kind of duties. Supervision schedule is after school activities. You need to look at your teacher working conditions survey, uh, what, the, you know, what needs to be addressed in it, and then you need to look at your latest accreditation report. That, that might point out things that need to be worked on as well. Once you've got all these things, you can begin to look at, at scheduling your school. Now, where do you start? What's your priority? Pretty simple. This, this, is, this is our master scheduling rationale. This is the, the this is the golden nugget. This is why you came today. This is the, the rabbit out of the hat. This is the deal right here. Um, this is the way you should set schedule a school, period. Now, you could argue with me all morning, but I'll just turn the camera off and you can go on about my business. Th there is no other way. This is it. You know, there is no other way to schedule a school. That, 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 but I have just, folks tell me all the time, but that, no, no, no. You have to start with your federal programs, folks. They are the most restrictive. They are, you have the least, you have the least governance piece in them, the, the least amount of governance in, in them. They are the most restrictive. They are the most 
demanding. They they have the most rules and regulations about how the money will be spent or the personnel will be used. The, the, the children that they work with have the most protections and the most requirements. Um, so what when we say federal programs, what are we talking about federal programs? Well, let me go to the next slide and I can come back. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. Exceptional children, EC. 504 and intervention, MTSS. All of those are covered. Now, you know that there's a thousand regulations in dealing with them. I don't even have to go through those. We could spend a week, and trust me, I could. Um, I could talk till my voice went for a week about all these things. Title I, English is a second language, whatever you want to call it, ESL, ELL, ELP, ESA. Gifted and, and CTE. Those are your federal programs. They they the money comes for them or the teachers come for them. You don't have any any say so in how they administer their programs. I mean, you you have to react to them and not them to you. Um, they are the eight hundred pound gorilla sitting in the teacher lounge, being loud and stupid. Um, but but that's just the, the facts of life, folks. And now remember. You only misspend federal money one time. And then somebody else will get the opportunity to do it. Um, you cannot make a mistake with federal money. And so that is where we start our scheduling process is with those programs. Second part, coming down the line in terms of, of hierarchy of how we schedule a school is state law. General Assembly, State Board of Education, North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. That is the hierarchy. General Assembly passes down to the state, and the state board looks at it and then adopts it and then, and then has their own resolutions uh, that sometimes the General Assembly adopts. They have a symbiotic relationship, but the General Assembly is in charge, and then they tell DPI what to do. DPI is like the central office in your district. They're, they're the people who carry out the wishes of, of the, the school board, superintendent, and state. Um, that's what DPI does. It comes from the General Assembly and state board and comes to them and they say, do this, don't do that. Um, and so those state laws, what do those include? So let's go to that slide. Um, they set class size limits, highly qualified teacher, teacher licensure, days, hours, minutes of instruction, planning time, duty free time, teacher work days. You've got to be in compliance with all of those things. So you can't say, well, I, you know, what I'll do is, is I'll put 40 kids because every parent wants their kid, in, you know, in Miss McIntosh's classroom. Um, the mama thinks she's the best teacher and the daddy thinks she's the prettiest. So we're going to put all of them in that room. Um, and then we'll, but we'll put down that, you know, that she's got 30 and the teacher next to her's got 30, but we'll really give her 50 and then her 10. No, don't do that. Can't do that. Now, you know that monthly the school activity report, the SAR is run automatically monthly. And when you're audited, wherever you say those kids are in your master schedule and power school on that school activity report, they better be there. You better not have, not, not even one over the limit in any room. Uh, highly qualified teacher licensure, you better not have teachers teaching out of, of at their licensure area. Days, hours, minutes of instruction. Uh, whatever it is, you know, the bell schedule is generally set by your district, but you better make sure that you keep up with that. Planning time. I mean, you know, this notion of we're going to put everybody on in the department on planning at the same time. That's a really bad idea. I mean, teachers get so much planning time, but but when and how they get it, you've got to be concerned about that. And remember that every kid's got to be assigned to an adult every hour of every day. Everybody can't be on planning time. That can't be the solution. You know, we, we can't, we can't, we got to, we have to monitor that. Duty free time, we generally do that before or after school, that 15 minutes. Um, or sometimes we do it, you know, principals have gotten creative and done it at lunch. But, you know, then, then you get into, you know, inadequate supervision if you're not careful there. So generally we do that. And then teacher work days, we set the calendar on those. So those come second. We have to take all those things into accommodation. And so we start with all of our federal programs. They come first, and then we make sure that we follow all state law. Then what comes next is local board of education policy. There's a reason that those folks got elected. So let's look and see what they do. 
Um, they figure out things like your daily schedule. Is it a blocks? Is it a flex? Is it an AB day? Is it traditional? Is it a mosaic? Uh, mosaic, by the way, just means school within school. It's just a you know, different way to say it. Hours of instruction, math, reading, you know. Do you have 90 minutes of, of reading in elementary school every day? Do you have 120 because of 3D reading? I mean, they make those kinds of decisions. How much science are you going to get? How much social studies? How much language are? They make decisions on special programs like Words Their Way or Character Ed, Avid, Leader in Me, PBIS, those kinds of things. They set all the, 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 they allow for the clubs and the organizations and any kind of local assessments like quarterlies. These are the things, they're more than this, but these are the things that you got that, that would factor into your schedule. They do a, a thousand other things. I don't really, I only pick the ones that, that affect your master schedule. Um, <clears throat> And so that comes third. Now, fourth comes your EVOS. Who can teach and who can? Who can teach what kids well and who can? Can you teach the low kids? Can you teach the high kids? Do you work the middle kids? God, I wish I had Robin Hamilton here that was with us. Robin was so good at this, and she showed you this during her session. I mean, she lets EVOS drive, drive all of these kinds of decisions. Uh, but it also drives her professional development. You, you're not very good with these. Let's work on you with that. Um, but that's got to be, we want the best people to have the, the, the most appropriate people to have the, the kids appropriate to their skill and ability level. Now, that doesn't mean we don't want to grow all of our teachers to be great with all of our groups. But we got to worry about the here and now. And so we look at that data. Uh, and make sure that we do that. So, and and also our, our scheduling of our specials and our core subjects. Um, you know, we used to call them pullouts. Now we call them specials and cores. You know, art, music, PE, or recess, whatever we want to call it now in, in elementary. Those kinds of things. That that comes next. And then you know, and then finally, uh, teacher input. And not teacher input in I want to teach this and I want to teach that. Teacher input on student information. Teacher input on student information about, you know, this kid needs to be here, needs to be there. Uh, not I want this group. I, I deserve, I've been here the longest. I get to teach the smartest, the easiest ones. No, that's that's not teacher input. Um, and, and so uh, I'll stop my I'll stop my share, tell my story, and then we'll we'll go to questions before we proceed on. So my story on getting this getting this list of priorities wrong is I went to a, a school in out in uh, well you go when you when you turn the curve in Raleigh on 40 and go from west to east, now you're going north to south toward Wilmington, about halfway to Wilmington. I think it's 42 you get off on and you head across the state to the coast toward Topsail. Now, if you've ever been that way, you know that you better have a full tank of gas. Um, there, even the convenience stores have, uh, have gone out of business in that part of the world. Your, your, your GPS will just sit there and spin. It doesn't even know where you are. Um, to say that you're in the middle of nowhere uh, is an understatement. I think, they were working on the road. I had to take a dirt road, and I had to get, pull up a man's driveway and through his carport and out the backside to get to the school. That's how far out in the woods we were. Now, what's the likelihood when I got there that they were having a random Title I audit? None. You need the helicopter to find the place. Um, nobody was just driving down the road from Raleigh and said, I think we'll go out here. And we're, we, if we have a flat tire, we'll die. We're so far out in the middle of nowhere and doing all, a, a, a random Title I all. What happened was is the principal was getting near retirement and the third grade teachers beat him up. And, and, and he finally, to get them off his back, he took and put, to balance the loads in third grade, he put 20 kids in, in a uh, Title I classroom that weren't supposed to be in there to balance the loads in third grade. And he said, I just need to get them off my back. Well, you know, I had to wait an hour to see him, and he told me what they were there for, and I, you know, I hate that for you. And so what we did an hour, and I visited my intern, and then, of course, then I went back two weeks later and met the new principal. Um, you don't misspend federal money but one time. And he 
forgot the priority that federal programs come first and teacher input comes fifth, he let the teachers browbeat him into putting kids in a Title I that were not Title I kids. Now, you all being in Thomasville understand the difference, I'm quite sure, in having a Title I program and being a Title I school. Having a Title I program, only the Title I kids can, can share in, in those resources, including teachers. If you're a Title I school, everybody can, but they weren't a Title I school. They just had a Title I program. And they he was let go that week, and I had to go back and meet the new person. That's absolutely a true story. I was there. I saw it. I know it. I've been involved in that. My time in the central office in Charlotte, I, I just can tell you, you can't misspend federal money. You have to go by your rationale. You can't decide, well, I'm going to do it a new way, or I've got a better idea. No, you don't. Trust me, you don't. Um, the federal government, um, for good or for bad, um, <clears throat> has no sense of humor about these kinds of things. Uh, and they're sticklers to follow their rules, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. And so I, I'm just I'm just cautioning you now. Um, if you misspend their money, you won't survive it. So <clears throat> I'm gonna pause now, believe it or not. Before we proceed on, we don't have a whole lot more, but questions you have for me about that rationale. Federal programs, state law, local board policy, your performance data, you know, and that, that always coincides with your specials and then teacher input. What do you think about the rationale? What What is good or bad or indifferent about it? I think it just, it's just the way it fits. I don't think you do anything about it. <laughs> Each one is uh, supersedes the one below it, I guess. That is correct. It, it is a, and that's why, th thank you, Sean. It, that's why it's a, called a rationale. There's a rationality to it. The, this one supersedes that one, supersedes that one, supersedes that one. Uh, it's not just a list or an order. That's why we call it a rationale. That's exactly the point. Um, and so once you step outside of that, even for a little bit, the whole thing comes crashing down like a house of cards. See, I've had students argue, well, I could do this in place of this. Well. It doesn't work that way. It's a foundational piece. Um, once, once you start changing at least a little bit of thing, it, the whole thing just topples over. It just crumbles. It, a rationale means that this comes before that, and it has to be that way. You know, that, that it, you can't. Now, teachers will try to argue you down, people in your building, parents. I'm telling you, while we're sitting here today, and you're sitting in that room, and I'm sitting in, in my office here, uh, this sounds completely normal. You say, Dale, why are you belaboring this point? This sounds completely normal, rational. Uh, nobody would argue with this until you take it outside of the rooms that we're in and teachers see it and parents see it and they don't like it because it, do because it doesn't favor them. But the whole notion here is, is if you use this rationale, you did the right thing for kids. And that's that has to be your argument. Now, when teachers say, but it ain't, it's not the right thing for me, you have to agree. I, 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 yes, that is correct. I hate that for you, but no, it, it is not good. It's, it, I didn't, we didn't schedule the school for your convenience. Um, we scheduled it for students. We need to be champion for kids, not champion for teachers. Um, I love teachers. You know, that, that's fine, but, but we don't, we don't run schools to, as employment agencies. And everybody has to understand that. And as soon as we do one little thing out of our rationale, the whole thing comes crashing down. And we don't get the results that we need in our school. All right, back to our screen here. I'll try not to keep us all day since it is Friday. I've got my eye on the time today. All right. <clears throat> A master schedule does not positively impact the academic initiatives of your school improvement plan is the outcome of a poor master scheduling process and did not occur by chance or luck. Uh, we can increase the probability of our master schedule having a positive impact by utilizing the proper master scheduling rationale. And that's kind of my close on that. Do that. All right, so now, I promised I'd be brief today. We've looked at 
we've we've looked at teacher evaluation. We've looked at our exceptional children's programs. Um, we've looked at differentiated instruction. Uh, we've looked at how to build a master schedule. We've, we've looked at these kinds of things. Uh, and the teacher evaluation piece had, uh, had a small part of building professional growth plans, trying to build your, trying to build your faculty. Um, but, but everything, again, has to point to student achievement. Um, as you are well into your administrative careers, uh, and you're at the role where you're aspiring to be principals, you know, before you as old as I am, soon, hopefully. Um, the biggest transformation that you have to make, and, and I talk to students about this all the time, is, is who you're going to be a champion for. Um, I'm not saying hate teachers. I'm not saying be suspicious of teachers. I'm not saying be mean to teachers. Love them all you can. You know, I was famous for buying chicken on Fridays at Price's Chicken Coop and gear and jackets and coats and all that, you know, the stuff that high school people love. And, um, you know, in middle school, I did the things that are appropriate to those teachers. I was guilty of all that. And people said, well, you just bought good evaluations. Well, like, <laughs> duh. Um, that just means I'm smarter than you. Um, I understand that, that life is transactional. Um, but but in the end, what we hope is, is that you will transcend that. You used to be one of them and you thought it would be, you, you probably got in, you might've gotten into administration because you wanted, you know, you wanted to be better than the ones you saw, but you wanted to be good for teachers. Well, I need for you, the district needs for you to, that, that's okay, but we need for you to transcend to another level where you understand it's all about kids and their performance. Um, and that's that's what all these things have been geared for teacher evaluation you know our teachers performing master schedule are you getting the most out of it differentiated instruction are we doing the very best we can with them exceptional children's program are we meeting their needs uh, because we find if you don't meet the needs of your exceptional learners or your special populations you're probably not meeting the, the needs of the other ones either uh, how you do some things is how you do all things. Let me say that again. How you do some things is how you do all things. And if you go into a school where the kids that are in the, the, the federal programs are ha not having their needs met, the rest of them won't be either. It's just the way it works. Um, you know, suck it up, buttercup. The world is a hard place. Um, you know, that that's just that's just the truth of how the world works. If you're not if you're not providing for those kids in your federal in your special pops federal program, you aren't providing for anybody. It's not a priority. So everything that we pointed you to this semester is moving you from the notion that I'm going to be a champion for for the faculty and for the school community and parents to I need to be a faculty as a principal. I need to be a champion for kids. And if I do that, everything else will take care of itself. That's harder. Not as many people are going to like it. You, you're not going to facilitate as many adults. And they're going. They're, you, you know, you're not going to do as many favors and et cetera. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Politically, you're not going to be as, as popular initially as you could be if you did favors. But once you start to achieve and perform, um, you'll be more popular than ever. But but everything has got to be pointed back again that student achievement that 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 pyramid all right I, I promised i'd be brief today since we were on a delay and and came through and that that i wouldn't keep you all morning um questions you have from me about any of the the different classes that we had during the spring on on the series anything any suggestions you have for for what we should do better All right. Well, I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. I sent the uh, uh, to, to Miss Hope. I sent her today's presentation, as you can see. You, you can tell I didn't steal that one from anybody. That one's mine. Uh, it, 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 it looked like about a fourth grader put it together, but that's about the level I am. Um, but mine's always just straight to the point and uh, just tells you this is what you got to do. Do this. Don't do that. Uh, remember, I'm an operations person. We kind of get to the point. All right. Anything else today? 
I'm going to let y'all out early. I promised I'd have you out at 1030. My word, I think I might have. You're right there, Dr. Lamb, right there. <laughs> All right. So thank, you. So, thank you. I enjoyed being with you. Um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate what y'all do. I really do. You know, I live in the region and I appreciate what you do. Uh, last thing before I go, now that, that officially, Steve Laws is my counterpart in EDLS. Steve and I work together. Um, I don't know if y'all knew or not, but over at the Davidson Davy Community College, we, we run doctoral cohorts out of there uh, for your residency piece. And we're looking for some doctoral students for the fall at Gardner Webb. And now, now, if you know me, I'm a statistician. I don't believe in gambling, but I, the only gambling I believe in is betting on yourself. I've never seen a time when your future would be brighter in the business to go back to school. So if you don't come to Guard the Web, that's okay. We've got a great doctoral program. We got one in curriculum. We got one in, in leadership. They're great programs. Please do, but please go somewhere. Please go somewhere. This is your opportunity. Take the most take the best advantage of it that you can. Be in a doctoral program somewhere this fall or very shortly after. Um, talk to your, you know, a lot of times we've got uh, the last one we ran, I just finished one in Gassum where I had 14 there in the master's program. We did a, a doctoral in Wilkes. Um, we, 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 if you get enough people, we'll come, but, but we'll be in Davidson Davy anyway. And hopefully you could have a lot of your, your friends or colleagues or folks in your district principal APs. But if you, if you don't do that, go to High Point, go somewhere. Um, go somewhere. That That's, that's my, my charge to you is go somewhere. You, you, you need, you need further training. So what I'm going to do, I'll send that information when I send today's video. I'll put Steve's uh, name and phone number if you'd like to get in touch with him. All right. Y'all have a good rest of your day. Um, if you need anything, just call on me. we got a lot of resources that guard the web. Just let us know. Everybody have a good weekend. Good, good end of the year. Thank you.